a blessed day students, especially to grade 12 accountancy and business management section of Virhandel Carmen, grade 12 humanities and social sciences section of Virgen del Pilar, and grade 12 science, technology, engineering, and mathematics section of Virgen del Rosario. We are now on the second week of our distance learning program, and I hope that all of you are still motivated to finish this unique school year in the history. So, before you finally start watching this video discussion, I hope you are 100% ready to learn and discover new things in the course Contemporary Philippine Arts from the Regions. Last week, you victoriously accomplished the first learning competency and objective for this course where you learned once again the definition of arts. The teacher has given you a recap of what you have learned in the field of arts when you were in junior high school. You also learned the definition of the main topic for this course, the contemporary arts. Not just that, you were given as well an overview about the different contemporary art forms in the various regions of the country. With that, I believe we can now 100% ready to proceed to the next topic, which is all about the various art forms in the Philippines. Various art forms. I know malabu pa para sa inyo ang kahulugan ng salitang various art forms, but I'll be giving my best for you to understand what the topic is all about as we go on with our discussion. To begin with, Allow me to present first the first learning competency for the week 2 of this course. Again, when we say competency, we get this from the most essential learning competencies or also known as the MELCs from the Department of Education. This is the curriculum guide that we are using in the implementation of our distance learning program since we are still in the time of pandemic. So, our learning competency for today is discusses various art forms found in the Philippines. Sa madaling sabi, iikot lang ang ating talakayan for today sa mga impormasyon at detalye tungkol sa different art forms dito sa ating bansa. Just like what I said a while ago, alam kong malabo pa sa inyo, what are these art forms? Pero we will explain all of this later. And of course, kung mayroong learning competency, we do have as well our learning objectives. That is why at the end of this session, or after you accomplish your second learning module, you are expected to cite and describe examples of the different art forms in the country by writing a journal entry using reliable data and facts. I'll repeat, write a journal entry using reliable data and facts. If in the first learning module, you did a reflection paper, this time around, the last part of your learning journey for this week has something to do with writing a journal entry about the topic that we have right now. But I'd like to emphasize na in the making of your journal entry, you must use only reliable data and facts. Kaya you have to be careful in finishing your final output of the week. Now that I have given already the learning competency and objectives, ang tanong, ano-ano nga po ba ang mga eksaktong paksa o aralin para sa linggong ito? Number one, iisa-isahin kong tatalakayin ang iba't ibang art forms that can be found here in the Philippines. As you observed, walang sinabing particular phase or period in the history of Philippine arts. Because for this week, we'll be talking about Philippine arts in general. From the arts of our ancestors hanggang sa kasalukuyan, 
pero ililimit lang natin ang information pagdating sa contemporary arts because nire-reserve natin yon para sa susunod na linggo. And number two, secondly, a corresponding examples of masterpieces in each art form will be given or presented to you. So, let us officially begin our second discussion in the course Contemporary Philippine Arts from the Regions. Last week class, I presented you this diagram. Kaya I assume na malinaw sa inyo kung paanong nakarating ang ating bansa sa tinatawag na Contemporary Art Era o ang kasalukuyang mukha sa mundo ng sining. In other words, ethnic, Islamic, Spanish, American, and Japanese, and modern Philippine arts are the significant phases or the important periods that happened or that took place before we finally reach contemporary Philippine art era. Upang mas lalo nating maunawaan ang mga bahaging ito ng kasaysayan sa larangan ng sining, allow me to divide them into three groups. Number one, we have the pre-colonial, second, the colonial, and the third one, the post-colonial periods. Number one, kapag sinabi natin pre-colonial arts, it refers basically to the ethnic arts and the Islamic arts. Because in the Philippine history, these are the periods na wala pa ang mga dayuhang mananako. Kaya naman, most of the artworks recorded ay may unique identity or distinction na mula sa ating mga ancestors or mga sinaunang Pilipino. Sa madaling sabi, ito ang mukha ng ating traditional arts. Halimbawa, pottery and ritual arts ng mga ethnic groups. Pati na rin ang sari manok design in the Islamic region in the country. Next, number two. Started in 1565 and ended in 1946, this is what we call the colonial arts. Colonial means pananakop, kaya naman it has three important periods such as the Spanish colonization, which lasted for 333 years, American regime, which lasted naman for almost four decades, and the last is the Japanese occupation na halos nagtagal lamang in the duration of the Second World War. Again, katulad ng nabanggit ko class in the first discussion, when we say Spanish arts, mostly ang focus niyan ay ang religion or the spread of Christianity in the Philippines. Kaya naman kahit anong uri ng artworks ang nag-exist sa mga panahong ito, ay laging related sa church or sa religion. Pagdating naman ng Americans, most of the artworks ay tungkol sa innovations and the field of arts. And this is the time where Filipino artists start to look for identity. The American brought in education and values formation. Kung ang mga Kastila ang major influence nila sa ating kultura ay reliyon, sa mga Amerikano naman ay reforma sa edukasyon. Kabilang na rin ang tinatawag na American lifestyle or stateside na uri ng pamumuhay. Artists learned so much about neoclassical art and some of the features of the modern art. Sa panahon naman ng pananakop ng mga Hapones, dahil nga nasa gitna ito ng ikalawang digma ang pandaigdig, ay hindi masyadong naging makulay ang mundo ng sining. For less than five years of the Japanese occupation sa mundo ng panitikan, na ibuhos ng maraming Pilipino ang kanilang husay sa sining gaya ng pagsulat ng haiku at tanaka. This is also the period where a lot of Filipino literary artists have risen. Sa pagtatapos ng colonial era, ay papasok ang kasalukuyang yugto sa larangan ng sining, the post-colonial art. Ito na ang malinaw na bahagi ng kasaysayan ng sining sa Pilipinas kung paano natin narating ang contemporary arts. It started when Filipino artists embraced the world of modern art from 1946 to 1970. 
though technically contemporary started or contemporary art started in the late 60s or early 70s. Sa Pilipinas ay nagkaroon muna ng transition phase patungo sa contemporary era. Ito yung tinatawag nating postmodern era na tumagal halos ng isang dekada from 1970 to 1980. And finally, malinaw na malinaw na hanggang sa kasalukuyan, the arts of being produced or the arts being produced in the country from 1980s up to this very moment are all products of contemporary arts. Bakit ko muling binalikan ang kasaysayan ng sining sa Pilipinas patungo sa contemporary art? Because for today, we will be talking and we will be discussing the notable art forms that can be found in the Philippines from the ethnic era until this very moment. Sabi class, it is true art that we can communicate to the world our inner feelings and our creativity that only exists within our mind. And just like in the first discussion, I have emphasized you that art is not just about drawing, that art is not just about painting, but instead, ito ay bahagi lamang ng malawak na mundo ng sining. And ang sabi, there are various art forms that can be found here in the country. And before I explain these art forms one by one, allow me to share this quotation or saying. It states, Any form of art is a form of power. What does it mean? Any form of art can change our lives. Any form of art can influence us. Any form of art can add spices or add colors in the way we live in this world. My dear grade 12 students, paano ba natin maiintindihan ang iba't ibang art forms that can be found here in the Philippines mula sa ethnic period papuntang contemporary art era? Look at the diagram. In the diagram on your screen, makikita natin that we can categorize the various art forms in the Philippines into three. What are these categories? Visual art, applied art, and the last one, performing art and others. When we say visual art, it includes drawing, painting, sculpture, calligraphy, and photography. And... And uh, applied art, you can read architecture, fashion, pottery, jewelry design, and interior design. And the last one, in the performing arts and others, you can see dancing, we do have music, theater arts, film productions, and even literature. Now, isa-isahin natin i-discuss ang mga yan at sa bawat grupo, at bawat art forms na ating tatalakayin ay magbibigay tayo ng mga notable masterpieces na meron dito sa ating bansa. Pero katulad nga ng nabanggit ko kanina, lilimitahan natin pagdating sa contemporary art era because we are reserving that for the discussion next week. Unahin muna natin class yung tinatawag nating visual arts. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng visual arts? When we say visual arts, it is defined as a form of art that uses any medium to represent the artist's idea, emotion, and imagination. Either the artist use a coloring material such as crayon, either the artist use paint, or either the artist use a camera, all the products na naiproduce ng artist ay nagfo-fall under visual arts. Pero ano ang specific identity ng visual arts? Its purpose. And what is the purpose of visual arts? To entice us para maakit tayo sa ganda na iprinoproduce ng artist. 
basically that's the purpose or that's the ultimate purpose of visual arts. Now, let's have the first art form under visual arts, which is drawing. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng drawing? When we say a drawing class, it is a representation of any form or object by hand through the medium of pencil, pen, charcoal, or any other uh, medium related to that. And I believe that drawing is the first visual art form that we learned sa ating buhay. Dahil nung bata tayo, kapag binigyan tayo ng ating mga magulang ng papel, ng lapis, Kahit stickman ay may nabubuo tayong konsepto mula sa ating imahinasyon. And yes, a stickman can be considered drawing. Nung naglalaro tayo sa lupa, nag-drawing o gumuhit tayo ng araw, that is also considered as drawing. And in the history of Philippine arts, the petroglyphs of Angono in the province of Rizal, is considered as one of the first drawing in the country. When we say petroglyphs, these are the drawings and the stones dahil wala pang papel noong panahon ng pamumuhay ng mga sinaunang Pilipino. At hanggang sa kasalukuyan ay matatagpuan nga ito sa probinsya ng Rizal. At makikita sa sining na ito kung paano namuhay ang mga ninuno natin. Napakasimple, napakayapak. That's what we call the petroglyphs of Angono in the province of Rizal. Now, aside from drawing, may mas colorful pang version na matatagpuan sa visual arts. And this is what we call painting. Painting is an art form of visual arts wherein it is defined as the process of art of using paint or any pigments pang kulay in a picture as a protective coating or as a decoration. And I believe this is the most famous art forms na alam natin. At ito nga sabi ko ang kalimitang perception natin that art is just all about painting. But then again, katulad ng paulit-ulit kong sinasabi, Painting is just an art form. Sa kasaysayan ng sining and and the uh, art form painting, isa sa mga naitalang maganda at kaakit-akit na produkto ng painting ay ang tinatawag nating espoliarium na iginuhit ng Pilipinong pintor na si Juan Luna. When we say espoliarium, it is a Latin word referring to the basement of the Roman Colosseum where the fallen and dying gladiators are dumped and devoid of their worldly possessions. Pero bukod dito ay sumasalamin din ang sining na ito tungkol sa naging sitwasyon ng maraming Pilipino sa panahon ng pananakop ng mga Kastila. Aside from the Espoliarium and the Spaniards' colonization era, Dumako naman tayo sa panahon ng mga Amerikano where the making of Philippine flag painting was painted by Fernando Amorsolo. Just like what I said during the American regime, Filipino artists start to search for our identity. And not just that, one of the best uh, paintings na naitala sa kasaysayan ng ating Sining ay ang tinatawag na market scene or the Changep painting which was done by a famous Cubist Filipino painter na ang pangalan ay Vicente Manansala. At sa mga susunod na araw ay mas makikilala pa natin kung sino ba si Vicente Manansala. But then again, this is one of the best example of paintings na mayroon tayo sa kasaysayan ng sining ng bansa. Now, aside from drawing and painting, another form of visual art is what we call sculpture. Sculpture is defined as a three-dimensional art form that uses materials like clay, stone, or wood for its execution. Sa Tagalog o sa wikang Filipino, 
kilala ito sa tinatawag na paglilok o ang larangan ng eskultura. And when we say sculpture in our history, evident na ang larangang ito sa panahon pa man ng mga sinaunang Pilipino o ng ating mga katutubo, katulad na lang ng paggawa ng mga anito o Diyos-Diyosan. Sa rehiyong bulubundukin ng Cordillera ay matatagpuan ang kanilang bulul o mas kilala sa tawag na tinagtago. Now, sa panahon naman ng pananakop ng mga Kastila, isa sa mga kilalang produkto ng eskultura ay ginawa ni Mariano Madrinyan ang tinatawag na Mater Dolorosa o ang ina ni Jesus na nagdadalamhati. What makes this interesting is that in the year 1882, Mariano Madrinyan received a diploma of award and the King Alfonso XII of Spain gave him a medal of honor for his masterpiece Mater Dolorosa. It was considered a magnificent work of art which was exhibited at the International Exposition held in Amsterdam that year. And of course, ang nakikita niyo sa screen ay isang replica ng gawa ni Mariano Madrinyan. At sumasalamin nga dito sa produkto ng eskultura na ito ang matinding pananampalataya ng mga Pilipino sa relihiyong Kristyanismo. And here's another notable product of sculpture, but this time in American regime. If you're familiar with the Quezon Hall or Quezon Building of University of the Philippines in Diliman, Quezon City, nasa harap nito ang tinatawag na oblation, which was made by Guillermo Tolentino. Sa mga darating na panahon ay makikilala pa natin kung sino ba si Guillermo Tolentino. But ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng oblation o what makes oblation significant? Oblation serves as the iconic symbol of the University of the Philippines. As you can see, it depicts a man facing upward with arms outstretched, symbolizing selfless offering of oneself to his union. Pero did you know class? na ang nakikita ninyo sa larawan ang hindi original na oblation. Why? Because did you know that the original oblation is located at UP Diliman Main Library Building? That means what, uh, what you can see in front of Quezon Building is just a replica of the famous artwork of Guillermo Tolentino. Another product of sculpture is the Sandugo by Napoleon Abueva. Sandugo is also known as the Blood Compact at nagpapakita ito sa bahagi ng ating kasaysayan kung paano naging magkaibigan ang mga katutubong Pilipino at ang mga grupo ng mga unang Kastila na nakarating sa ating bansa. So basically class, these are only some of the many uh, products of sculpture na makikita sa ating bansa. And very significant ang lahat ng mga ipinakita kong examples in our history. Now, aside from sculpture, we have another form of visual arts which is also known as calligraphy o yung tinatawag nating lettering sa layman's term. Lettering is defined as the art of writing letters in a manner that it looks visually appealing. Pero kung uugatin natin ang kasaysayan, saan ba nagsimula ang sining na ito? Sa panahon pa lamang ng mga sinaunang Pilipino ay mayroon ng calligraphy. And the perfect example for that is the first alphabet recorded in our history which is called alibata or also known by Bayin. So alam naman natin sa pag-aaral natin ng kasaysayan na ang alibata ang isa sa mga unang sistema ng pagsusulat sa ating bansa. At sa kasalukuyan, the art of calligraphy or lettering is still evident. Here's another example. In the present time, we have a wedding invitations which was done by Nika Samar, a famous calligraphy artist here in the Philippines.
And from calligraphy, let's proceed to another form of visual arts, and we have photography. When we say photography class, it is the art of producing an image of an object on a photographic film. And I believe this is the most famous among the visual arts in the present generation sapagkat sa tulong na rin ng teknolohiya, halos lahat ay mayroong access in this visual art forms. Now, sa panahon ng mga unang Pilipino ay wala pang photography sapagkat hindi pa uso ang camera. Pero sa panahon ng pananakop ng Kastila at naimbento na ang camera, na itala din ang ilan sa mga magagandang larawan sa kasaysayan ng Pilipinas. One of the best examples in photography in the Philippines is the real image of the execution by firing squad of Dr. Jose Rizal. Yes, ano man ang nakikita nyong larawan ang aktual na imahe ng pagkakabaril ni Jose Rizal sa bagong bayan o sa tinatawag nating Luneta Park ngayon. This was captured by Manuel Arias Rodriguez. Aside from that, in the American regime, ay narito rin ang ilan sa mga magagandang larawan, bagamat black and white sapagkat hindi pa high-tech ang panahon, ay kakikitaan ng ganda ng sining at sumasalamin sa tunay na buhay ng mga Pilipino. We have the Palma Hall at UP Diliman at makikita natin ang ilan sa mga modelo ng larawan na nagbibigay ng idea sa atin kung paano ba sila namuhay sa panahon ng mga Amerikano. And we have another picture, this time the old picture of Jones Bridge in Manila na kung mababalitaan natin ay muling ibinabalik ang ganda sa panahon ni Mayor Isko Moreno ng City of Manila. And of course, in the present time, we have famous photographers and one of them is Mr. John K. Chua. This is one of his masterpieces in the field of photography. This picture is entitled Cebu Fish Sanctuary. And in the coming days of our discussion, we'll be learning more about the contemporary photography. So these are the examples of visual art forms, drawing, painting, sculpture, calligraphy, photography. They fall under visual arts. Now from visual arts, let's proceed to what we call applied arts. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng applied arts class? Applied arts is a form of art that can be defined as art that has practical application as well as functionality. Kung ang visual arts, ang main purpose niyan ay to entice our eyes to have an appeal, lalong-lalo na sa audience, this time, ang purpose naman ng applied arts ay these are the product of our imagination na pwede nating magamit sa pang-araw-araw nating pamumuhay. They are not just purely a display, but they can be functional, they can be used in our daily living. So what are the examples of applied arts? Number one, we have what we call architecture. Architecture is not just a display class, right? Because when we say architecture, it is the art or practice of designing and constructing buildings. Yes, it could be appealing to your eyes. It could be enticing for you. Pero dun pa rin tayo sa totoong purpose why these artworks exist. They are not just pure display, but they are functional at magagamit natin sa pang-araw-araw nating pamumuhay. At sa kasaysayan ng arkitektura sa Pilipinas, evident kung paano ito nag-evolve mula sa bahay kubo o yung tinatawag nating nipahat ng mga unang tao, kabilang na rin ang tinatawag na bahay na bato na kadalasan ay matatagpuan sa Batanes. And of course, kasama na rin dito ang decorative na structure ng mga moske sa bahagi ng Mindanao na kung saan ay laganap ang relihiyong Islam. 
And sa panahon ng pananakop ng mga Kastila, ang arkitektura ay nakafocus sa paggawa o pagtatayo ng mga simbahan o puok dalanginan. One of the best examples of churches with refined and, of course, elegant architectural design is the St. Dominic de Guzman Parish Church in Abukay, Bataan, which is considered as one of the oldest churches in the Philippines. Sa panahon naman ng pananakop ng mga Amerikano ay naging tanyag ang arkitektura sa mga paaralan at isa sa mga perfect example na ito ay ang mga tinatawag na Gabaldon Buildings. Ang Gabaldon Buildings ay kalimitang makikita sa mga paaralan because just like what I said, sa panahon ng Amerikano, binigyang prioridad ang edukasyon. At bukod dito, nakilala din ang iba't ibang neoclassical building katulad ng Manila Post Office Building. Ang Gabaldon Building at Manila Post Office Building ay isa lamang sa mga patunay na talagang naging maganda ang kontribusyon ng pananakop ng mga Amerikano sa ating lipunan. And when we became free sa mga colonizers in the modern period, ay nakilala ang iba't ibang estruktura, lalong-lalo na sa panahon ni Ferdinand Edralin Marcos. The former president is the reason why we do have the so-called Cultural Center of the Philippines, Philippine International Convention Centers, at marami pang modernong gusali sa ating bansa. And in the present times, we have the famous Philippine Arena, which we will be discussing sa susunod na linggo. That's for architecture. Again, my dear grade 12 students, I'd like to repeat that today, we are discussing the various Philippine art forms in general. Kaya the examples that I am giving ay nanggagaling sa iba't ibang panahon or eras. And we are limiting the examples in the contemporary era because that will be our main topic for next week. Now, still under applied arts, let's proceed to another form which is fashion design. Ano nga ba ang fashion design? Fashion design class is the art of designing apparel that are aesthetically pleasing as well as functional. Fashion design involves working with different types of fabrics and patterns which are then designed into garments. Pananamit o kasuotan. Yes, you heard it right. Ang paraan ng pananamit at kasuotan ay bahagi din ng kasaysayan ng ating sining. Kilalang ating bansa class sa napakakulay na mundo ng fashion at hanggang sa kasalukuyan ay maraming Pilipino ang nangingibabaw sa larangan ito. But looking back in the history, sumasalamin na ang pagpapahalaga ng mga unang Pilipino sa mga disenyo ng kasuotan from the mountainous region of the Cordilleras with their bahags or also known as igorot garments to a more refined design in garments ng mga Pilipino na naninirahan sa kapatagan and of course, the unique fashion design ng mga kapatid nating Muslim sa Mindanao ay talaga namang masasabi natin na bago pa man tayo masakop ng mga Kastila ay may sarili na tayong panlasa sa mundo ng fashion. Sa pagpasok class ng colonial era ay mas lalong na-develop ang larangang ito mula sa mga elegante at mamahaling damit pang simba lalo na kung ikaw ay kabilang sa mga tinatawag na prinsipalya sa panahon ng mga Kastila hanggang sa mga damit formal para sa mga pagtitipon gaya ng saya, bestida at Amerikana naman ng mga kalalakihan and the American regime. In this period, ay masasabi natin na mas lalo tayong naging sibilisadong tingnan sa uri ng ating mga kasuotan, which until today ay evident sa ating lipunan. Aside from the world of fashion, another form of applied arts class is what we call pottery. 
what is the definition ba ng pottery considering the fact that it is one of the latest trends in the present society because of the plantitos and plantitas out there. Pottery class is one of the oldest and most widespread of the decorative arts where objects made are commonly useful ones, such as vessels for holding liquids or plates from which food can be served. In other words, my dear grade 12 students, sumasalamin na ang pottery o ang pagpapalayok sa wikang Filipino ay isa na sa mga naunang sining ng ating mga ninuno. Ang mga ito ay ginamit nila sa pang-araw-araw nilang pamumuhay bilang mga tapayan or imbaka ng tubig at maaari pati na rin ang kanilang mga sinaunang inumin at pampalasa. But aside from this, ang mga tapayang ito ay ginamit din bilang bahagi ng kultura sa mga rito o ritual gaya ng paglilibing. The perfect example for this is the Manunggol Jar of Palawan. The Manunggol Jar class is widely acknowledged to be one of the finest Philippine pre-colonial artworks ever produced and it is considered a masterpiece of Philippine ceramics. Pinaniniwala ang nagmula sa taong 890 to 710 BC ang Manunggol Jar. At kung makikita ninyo, mayroon itong dalawang figura sa tuktok ng takip. Ang isa ang nagsasagwa ng bangka at ang nasa harap ay tila bangkay na nakatiklop sa dibdib ang mga kamay. Sinasabing ang bangka na ito ay naghahatid ng namatay na kaluwa patungo sa huli nitong hantungan. Aside from this, ay mas lalong niyakap ng mga ninuno natin ang sining ng pagpapalayok when the ancient Chinese traders introduced the porcelain vases and jars as one of the products sa unang sistema ng pakikipagkalakalan. At hanggang ngayon, ay makikita pa din natin na marami sa ating mga kapwa Pilipino ang gumagamit ng ganitong uri ng ceramics sa kanilang mga tahanan. And just like what I said, pottery is still part of the arts and design due to the emerging trend of planting activity and hobby ng mga tao sa kasalukuyan. Another form class of applied art is what we call jewelry design. Jewelry design is also a different form of art and it involves the design of intricate pieces of jewelry from metals, wood, or plastic. Bagaman may sariling version ang ating mga ninuno ng mga borloloy at alahas, ay niyakap din nila ang mga disenyo mula sa mga baniaga. Halimbawa, ay ang paggamit ng paineta para sa pagsisinop ng buhok ng mga kababaihan sa panahon ng mga Kastila. And finally, the last form of applied art is interior design. This form of art is connected or related to architecture. Why? Because interior design is the art of planning the design, layout, and style of an architectural space, be it home or office. In other words, ang mga natapos na estruktura sa larangan ng arkitektura ay mas nagiging kaaya-aya pa because of the classy and elegant designs na inilalahad at ibinibigay ng interior designing. Sumasalamin din, class, ang interior designing sa kaugalian ng mga Pilipino bilang masisinop at maayos sa kagamitan. Halimbawa na lamang ay ang panloob na disenyo na matatagpuan sa San Agustin Church. It is located inside the historic walled city of Intramuros in Manila. Na itayo at natapos noong 1607, ito ay kinoconsider ngayon as the oldest stone church in the country. Not just that, it was also named as a national historical landmark by the Philippine government in 1976. Another example for this form of art is the interior design of the PICC or Philippine International Convention Center. This is a post-colonial product of art. Its construction started in 1974 at ito ay natapos agad noong 1976. This facility has been the host of numerous local and foreign conventions, meetings, 
fairs and social events. So these are some of the notable examples of Philippine interior design. And from architecture, fashion, pottery, jewelry, and fashion design na bumubuo sa applied form of arts, let us now proceed to what we call performing arts. Ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng performing arts class? If visual art is appealing and applied art naman is described as functional, performing art on the other hand is considered as the most entertaining form of art. Why? Because these are creative activities that are performed in front of an audience like you, such as drama, music, and dance. And undoubtedly, ito ang pinaka na-appreciate at na-enjoy ng katulad mong manunood. Mula sa elemento ng galaw, saliw ng musika, emosyong natatangi sa mga dula, ay tunay namang kahalihalina ang uri ng sining na ito. The first among these is dance. Dance class is a performing art consisting of purposefully selected sequences of human movement. Mula sa pagpitik ng mga daliri, sa pagindayog ng mga baywang, at sa paghakbang ng paa, totoong bahagi na ng sining ng ating bansa ang pagsayaw. At pinaniniwalaan ito na nag-exist na sa panahon pa man ng ating mga ninuno. From the northern part of Luzon and southern part of the country, napakaraming mga katutubong sayaw ang naitala sa kasaysayan ng ating kultura at sining. At nananatili ang mga ito hanggang sa kasalukuyan. Halimbawa na lamang ay ang mga katutubong sayaw ng ating mga kapatid na Ifugao at ang mga kapatid din naman nating mga Muslim sa Maranao. Sa pagpasok ng colonial era, ang mga sayaw na may kaugnayan pa din sa relihiyon ang naging kontribusyon ng mga Kastila gaya ng sayaw sa Obando o ang sayaw kay Santa Clara. Ito ay ginagawa lalo na ng mga mag-asawa na hindi magkaroon ng supling o anak. But aside from these religious dances, may mga naitala ding sayaw sa mga pagtitipon sa panahon ng mga Kastila gaya ng karinyosa at ng tinikling. But come American regime, ang mga kapwa natin Filipino ay nahumaling sa sayaw na mas magalaw at mas makabago gaya ng vaudeville. And in the post-colonial era, social dances such as ballroom dances were embraced and patronized by many Filipinos, especially those in the upper class. At next week, we'll find out ano-ano nga bang mga contemporary dances sa kasalukuyan ang tinatangkilik naman ng bagong henerasyon. Pero of course, hindi pa rin limot sa kasaysayan ng ating sining ang mga festival dances. Dahil nga tayo ay isang kristyanong bansa, pinaniniwalaan na sa buong taon ay araw-araw na nagaganap ang iba't ibang sayawan sa iba't ibang bahagi ng ating bansa. Mula sa paggalaw ng ating mga katawan, let's have another performing art form which is music. Music is a form of art that combines vocal or instrumental sounds to create a composition. From a variety of instruments to the numerous number of singers in the country, we can say na sumasalamin dito ang pagyakap ng mga Pilipino sa uri ng sining na ito. At noon pa man, ang pagpapahalaga ng mga Pilipino sa larangan ito ay kapansin-pansin na. Halimbawa ay ang gong music ng mga kapatid nating katutubo sa Mindanao. Ngunit sa paglipas ng panahon ay nagbago ang mga ito, lalo na in the colonial era. Halimbawa ay ang rondalia music na binubuo ng mga instrumentong may kwerdas. And of course, who would forget harana at kundiman na masasabi nating makulay hindi lang sa larangan ng sining kung hindi na rin sa emosyon, damdamin at pag-ibig. At paulit-ulit kong ang sinasabi that since we have the religious influence ay kabilang din sa ating musika ang tinatawag na choir music. At sa pagkamit nga ng ating kalayaan ay we have discovered also our identity in the field of music through the so-called OPM or original Pinoy music. From Regine Velasquez, Lea Salonga, Gary Valenciano, Ogi Alcacid, and to the present breed of singers, 
name them ay siguradong hahanga ka sa kanilang angking galing sa musika. Also, part of the performing arts are the theater and film o ang larangan ng dula at pelikula. The form of arts use stories o kwento that captures the imagination of people. Kaya naman, it is also a good form of entertainment. Ang pinagkaiba lamang ng dalawa, ang dula ay live performance. Samantalang ang pelikula naman ay pre-recorded sa tulong na rin ng makabagong teknolohiya. Some of the examples of theater arts ay nag-ugat sa panahon ng pananakop ng mga Kastila. Ito ay ang senakulo for example o yung pagsasadula ng pagpapakasakit ni Kristo na ginagawa tuwing mga mahal na araw. And aside from this, another form of entertainment during the Spanish colonization ay ang moro-moro which depicts the battle of Christians and Muslims. This play is actually originated in Europe, ngunit ang paraan ng pagpapalabas nito sa ating bansa ay tunay na katangi-tangi. Another product of theater arts ay ang zarzuela, and one of the notable example of it is Severino Reyes' Walang Sugat, na hanggang sa kasalukuyan ay binibigang halaga. And of course, in the field of film production, masasabi natin na ang uri ng sining na ito ay isa sa mga dahilan. Why we have a lot of outstanding actors and actresses. From the old movie houses to the present way of streaming this product of arts, we can conclude that it is another marvelous form of art that we Filipinos have truly embraced and given importance. And aside from the performing arts, other form of art that is widely known in the country is literature. It is considered as the art form of language, and the words are its tools. At alam natin na ang panitikan ay may malaking bahaging ginampanan sa pagkamit ng ating kalayaan. Because notable examples of this art form is Jose Rizal's novels, entitled Nolimi Tangere. Kabilang na rin din dito ang El Filibusterismo, mga produkto ng panitikan na maaari din nating masabi na simbolo ng ating kalayaan at kamulatan. At sa kasalukuyan, we have a lot of national artists in the field of literature like Amado Hernandez, Rolando Tino, Francisco, Ar- uh, Francisco Arcelliana, and one of my favorite literary artists is Jose Garcia Villa. Among Villa's works ay ang Emperor's New Sonnet. This is a literary piece na hindi mo na kailangang magbigay ng mahabang panahon sa pagbabasa. And on your screen is a copy of this magnificent product of literature. Yes, tama ang nakikita nyo. This is one of the best literary pieces of the country. And you wouldn't understand it unless alam mo din ang kwento ng Emperor's New Clothes. And as for me, this is one of my favorites. So again, that's the third group of art forms, the performing arts and others na binubuo ng dance, music, theater and film, and literature. To sum of everything, my dear grade 12 students, we can say that the different art forms that can be found in the Philippines mula sa panahon ng ating mga ninuno hanggang sa kasalukuyang panahon and from north to south, from east to west, from the deepest part of our oceans and from the topest part of our mountains, this art form exists and will always be. Kaya naman sa susunod na linggo ay halos kapareho lamang ng paksang ito ang ating pag-uusapan. Ang pinagkaiba lamang ay bibigyan naman nating focus o halaga pati na rin ang mga halimbawa ng mga art forms in the contemporary era.